Welcome to Impact the World, the show for and about creatives, change makers, and entrepreneurs. This is a conversation episode where a special guest shares with me what they are creating and the behind the scenes journey of their experience. I'm delighted to have Nikki Pattinson as my guest today for the show. Nikki and I have been friends for a decade, and in all the time I've known Nikki, I have seen her out there in the world working with businesses, companies on stage, teaching connection and resonance. But as we often say, she is one of those people who truly walks her talk. So I wanted her to come to the show today, not only so that you could experience what it is that she does, but because I'm sure some of you will recognize yourself in her story. And because at this time, one of the things that Nikki is so passionate about is the age that we're in, resonance and connection are crucial, especially if you're somebody putting your work out into the world, having services or products that people might want to engage with. As Nikki always says, selling is simply connection. And that's what we create when we're in any kind of exchange like that. So. I hope you enjoy the episode and you can find out more about Nikki at nikkipattinson.com and as usual we'll put all links underneath the episode. Nikki, welcome to the show. It's so good to have you here today. Oh, thanks for having me. It's brilliant to be here. Thank you. Well, as I have just shared with everybody in my introduction of you I, you know, we've been friends for a decade and I've been to all kinds of places with you over the years in America and England and wherever we go, you are somebody who just talks to everybody and knows everything about everybody. And the big joke is that when you came to visit us in Malibu a few, few months back, we met people in the, in the shops that we go to and in the neighborhood that we've, we've seen like from a distance, but you could tell us who they were, where they'd been, what their life story was, and that's just you. So it's always a treat to be out in the world with you because you master the art of connection. I'm curious, how did that start for you? Was that just an innate gift or was that something that you had to learn? No, that is something that I I think I actually learned. And yeah, I do make a point of getting to know people because I have never met anybody who isn't absolutely fascinating when you get them to tell the truth about themselves. So yeah, I love to meet people, but I had quite a strange upbringing. So you might be able to tell from this accent But I was born in a little village called Homefirth in Yorkshire. And my dad were a farmer um, on on the top of the hill. And I'm not being funny, but, you know, my mum married him because he'd got a little bit of land and some property. And, you know, that made him very handsome in those days. The world was very different, I'm being honest. But my mother didn't like other people coming to play. And it was, you know, it was like, no, sorry, where'd you live? No, you can't come here. No, sorry. And I spent a lot of time on my own. But also, I had to find acceptance for who I was because, as I I said, the world was so different then. And I was told by my parents, by my teachers, by everybody, that if I continued to be who I was, I would never be anybody. And if I continued with this accent, I would never be anybody. So... I think I was quite a lonely child. And then I just, you know, things happened and I thought, you know what, I've got to find out how to put myself into the world. Because for me, being with people in, you know, in whether it's work or business or whatever, you are in the world. And not only that, but you find so much about yourself, never mind anybody else. All you're doing is reflecting back to you who you are. And it's so funny because I remember when we first met and we were getting to know each other, I was learning at the time about the work that you were doing mainly in corporate and some TV and, but your, your thing that people hired you for was to bring you into their company or their business and increase sales and basically focus on the customer service and the sales. And what you said to me the very first time we talked about it was you were like, well, selling is connection. It's not about money. It's not about a product. 
it's about connection. So can you elaborate a little bit about that for people who that might be a new thought to? Oh, absolutely. You know, everything is about connection and how people feel in your unique presence. And that, that's a fascinating thing. You know, my first job, because I'm not very academic, I can't count. I can talk, but I can't count. And my first job was in a shoe shop in, in a little town called Uddersfield. And I sold more shoes in one day than anybody else could sell in a week. <laughs> I'd got no idea how we were doing it at that time. Now I can tell you every wink of the eye, every wave of the hand. But it was... The, the thing was, I learned very quickly how to get people to open up and to talk back and then how to create an energy around us that connected us far quicker. I mean, I got to know people probably better in five minutes than most people had got to know them in a year. But the thing is, I found a way of telling the world who I was very, very quickly, who I actually was. And we live in this, you know, we're living in the past a bit where you used to get all this, um, you know, I think the thing was, wasn't it, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, get somebody to talk to you, talk to talk about themselves and they'll really like you. All you need to do is to get somebody to talk to you uh, about themselves. And it's just not true anymore because we are so saturated that unless we know who you are, then people won't actually come back to you and talk to you because, you know, we just can't. We, we're so saturated. We literally just cannot talk to every single person that I meet. So all the time, I was picking up these ways and these principles, really, is what you'd call them, of how to connect with people. And people bought from me just because we had crack, because it was a very normal conversation. And, you know, it's easy to get people literally to delete you if that's what you want. And if we go back, I've just talked about shop work. I talk about trans language all the time and a trans phraseology. And this is really relevant to everybody today. You walk into a shop now they're all reopening. And, you know, if the shop assistant says, hello there, can I help you? literally, I'm going to delete, the customer is going to delete not only the words, because we've heard them so many times, they don't hit our consciousness, but we're going to delete the person as well. And that happens everywhere. So that, for me, is one of the first things of connection. You speak in a voice, in a tongue, with words that are yours, not what you think you're expected to see. And just to finish that, you know, it's actually bloody heartbreakingly because I've worked with all these shop assistants and you send them out, you know, somebody sent them out onto the shop floor and said, off you go then, ask all those people if you can help them. And you get nine people going, no thanks, mm. to some young girl or some returner to work and they begin to think it's them. Everything is about how you express yourself to create for somebody else what it is like to be in your unique presence. Yeah, the energy that you're bringing. And it's, it, it's funny too, because you mentioned getting deleted. And so when you talk about trance language, it's, it's following that script that we all know. Oh, can I help you? No, thanks, I'm fine. It's like we're all kind of asleep because we're all playing out the script that's been there before. But you talk about this in email too. And I remember, you know, some of our first email exchanges, you completely embodied what it is that you teach. I mean, I also know you have a course called Don't Get Deleted about how to write compelling emails for your life, for your work. But can you tell, tell me a little bit about what trance email language would be and, and how to do it the other way? Right. Hi, I hope you are well. Kind regards. <laughs> Has anyone ever written, I hope you are well, at the beginning of an email? And I think you were the one that told me to stop doing it. Yeah. Well, do you know what? The sad thing is that every day off every deck, trillions of emails go out like that, that are never read, never seen, and the person is deleted. So, you know, there's lots of different ways of using this, but I'd never say, hi, I hope you were well. I might say, if it was somebody that I didn't know, it might be, and I would kind of activate something in the brain when we started. So I would probably say, not highly, but Lee, dot, dot, higher. Right, 
you don't know me from a pineapple. My name's Nikki. I live in Home Firth. I've heard all about you. And this is why one day, somehow, me and you were going to get on a Zoom call and say hello. Now, immediately, you would read that. And it couldn't be anybody else but me. Everybody has a particular style. But the thing is, the thing is that we need to have something at the start that is just you. And we all need a signature sign off. Because when people look at the day, they'll look at the beginning, they'll look at the end. And if you say, hi, I hope you're well and kind regards, the rest, you could be offering them a, a villa in Barbados, they're not going to read it. It's just not going to go into the soul. So I learned all this. Um, long story, we had a market stall, me and my lovely ex-husband, and here's to many more ex-husbands to come. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so yeah, me and my lovely ex-husband, we had a market stall that we took from a grand a week to two million a year. And I'll talk about it later, but this is where I learned all this stuff. And long story, we ended up... So can I just quickly jump in here? A grand a week for anyone who in North America or other places, that's a thousand a week to yeah. two million, to you two say. Million. And this was how long ago? 30 years. 30 years ago. Because I'll just say you don't equate a market stall that's selling biscuits or cookies if you're in North America with two million. That's just not normally the, a sentence that goes together. Well, ask me how we did it and what we were really selling in a bit. But I hit a really horrific time. You know, my marriage split up. I lost my son. I lost my home. I lost absolutely everything. And I was a single parent with a four-year-old boy um, who is nearly 30 now and mm. upstairs actually watching TV. But yeah, I so all this stuff happened and I was like a banshee. I didn't have any clue. I didn't even know who I was. And somebody offered me a job selling branding and design. And all I did was take what I learned on the market, modify it and reapply it to getting people. I was a, basically a cold caller. But this is how the email thing happened. So on my first day, and I was literally sick with nerves. I've not worked for two years. My self-esteem wasn't, it wasn't even a, to a 0 0.1. And I went downstairs, he sat me down in this cell and I've got a bit of a voice on me. So they got me an office in the cell so nobody could hear me. And I thought, I'm just going to see where everybody else has got, gone wrong and they're not sat on this seat. So I got a diary, and you, the diary out, and you could see the handwriting changed every three months where they got somebody else. So I asked them to print off. It was letters then. Email had only just come in. Print me off all the letters, will you, that, that, pe that these people sent out to get people to start a business friendship with them. Oh, my God, I'm not kidding. I learned Everything I needed to know, every single one of them said the same thing. I hope you're well. I would like to introduce you to. I would like to set up a mutually a, a mutually something meeting. Oh, is it any wonder these people weren't even getting a look in? So I started, I took what I'd learned on the markets, I'd modified it. And I started to write in a particular way. And on that very first day, and this is God's honest truth, I used it on the phone and on, on letters and then on, on email. And on that very first daily, and I still get emotional to talk about it because new business is the most creative thing on the planet. And on that first day, I got four brand new meetings from cold. And within six weeks, We'd created from nothing, from absolutely nothing, quarter of a million pounds worth of new business. And that is 25 years ago. We did yeah. 27 grand short of a million in a year. And I knew nothing about branding. I don't know. I don't want to know. I don't know anything about anything I've ever sold. Because the thing was, I knew and I learned on email, on the phone, and in real life, I knew how to sell the unique presence of the company, my relationship with the people on the company, and absolutely, you know, uh, the, my, to be in, in my own personal unique presence. So that's how I learned how to do the emails. And there's been literally millions and millions of pounds worth of business created 
because one minute there's nothing. And this is why I get emotional about it. And I will never apologize for that. New business is magic. It pays for everything. New business is what will get the world economy going again. And one minute there's nothing. And then you put words and form together and you put it out into the world. And one minute there's nothing. And the next minute there's everything. You tell me one thing on the planet that is more magic than that. Love it. And, and you know, one of the things I love about you in this video is on your website, which is nikkipattinson.com. We'll share the links underneath the video. There's a video of you. You were doing some work for Tesco in the UK, which is one of the biggest supermarkets, grocery stores in the UK. And um, it's so moving to watch these clips on this trailer of you at work because the byproduct of you going in there and helping people on the shop floor sell is they're all bursting into tears. You know, there's this, there's this, it's very reality show camera footage that these companies are getting of the transformation in the confidence that happens in, ev in these people that you're working with, that you have relationships with, that when we speak personally, you'll tell me about them. You know their name, you know their, their family. And I think the reason I bring that up is this is the interesting thing about you, Nikki. You're a powerhouse with a heart of gold. And I think sometimes people will hear this kind of stuff and they'll think it's technique. And that's always when you're dead in the water. Like if these are techniques you're doing to make connection happen, you're dead in the water. But for you, especially being with you and in the room with you, it comes from a very genuine appreciation of and respect for other people and desire to get to know them. And if you've, if you've got that in you, then what I understand from you is that some of the other stuff can be learned. And it's not about faking anything, it's just about allowing yourself to connect with people a little bit more and just shifting a few things where you're shy or where you think, oh, I can't say that. You try it and magic happens. And if you don't try it, you don't create anything. So it's the same as business really, as you're saying, it's magic when we create new business, but it's also magic when we actively create a new connection by leading. And that, that to me is what you're such a master of. But you can make a new connection with somebody in a millisecond. Look at those Tesco films, you know, and I mean, if you want the numbers, we were, we did 40 minutes on the shop floor, me and Pete the baker. Always, he's on my Facebook page, you know, I absolutely love him. I stay friends with people because it's like having a baby. I'm not being funny, but when you create something that wasn't there before, there's a bond there between us. And it was the day before uh, Easter and they put us on hot cross buns. And Peter, I mean, if, it's really funny because he's shaking, you know, he's going, I can't do this, I can't do this. And I don't work for the company unless I can put the uniform on and get out with these people because I love it. We were... 813% up on the sale of these hot cross buns, but it could have been anything in a 40 minute trading period against a 12 hour trading period. And if you watch that, you can see the tone of our voice, the body language, the way that I'm introducing Pete as my friend, you can see they're not buying it. Nobody ever buys, you know, up cross buns or you never buy what you seem to be buying. The buying, the connection with us and people just kept coming back to the end of the queue so they could talk to us and, there's, you know, to take me all night to explain exactly what were going on. But it is, so why people get emotional? I mean, you've just said it. I, I teach people, I connect people, I teach people how to connect with others. Well, the thing is, you've got to learn how to connect with yourself first. And that's where the emotion comes from. Because a lot of the people that I work with have had no said to them so many times that they actually don't know who they are anymore. And I remember I did a massive job for the airports um, and they put us on. Uh, and, you know, I'm there in my little uniform with my lipstick on and my hair tied back. And, you know, I, I just love it. And they put us on luxury goods. So fancy sunglasses, handbags. And I'm working with this young Polish girl called Magda. And so we were working together. Magda came around the corner sobbing. And I straight up got her in my arms. Magda, who has said what to you? I don't care how much they've spent. Nobody speaks to my mate like that. And she goes, no, 
you don't understand. She says, I've just been served a customer and they spoke to me like a real person and not just an immigrant for the first time. And that is not unusual because we all want to be resonated with and noticed. We all want that connection. Very few of us know how to do it because we're brainwashed. But just, you know, one other thing I want to make clear, the time for what I talk about is now because we used to speak from here and we used to think from here. But now this last few years, we've dropped into our heart and that is where we see and we think from. That's where all our decisions are made. So our communication now is going to be much more real and much more emotive. Yeah, because we make decisions about people based on their energy. Like, so for me, it's it's the gift of video now and how many videos are out there is I know within, you know, five seconds whether or not I resonate with this person on video because I can see them, but more importantly, I can feel them. And it's a sensory thing. And that's true for all of us, whether we're conscious of it or not. So I'm curious. I just want to circle back to you talking about being a very lonely child. Mm you've come a really long way because you, you know, you've got friends all over the world and people are your lifeblood, but you also, you also are really good at restoring and looking after yourself because the jobs that you do that I've seen you do over the last decade, they can be very tiring. They can take a lot from you. How do you then restore and rebalance yourself when you're in and out of all these emotional relationships, having these big emotions happen with people? I mean, there's, there's, for sure, a healing aspect to what you do, no question, even though it might not look like that. How do you balance that and recover and recoup and fill yourself up? Well, first of all, it's a complete circle. And I learned that on the biscuit stall, on the cookie counter. We all, it's, it, they, I help them, they help me. It's a com- we complete the circle. We all help each other. It certainly don't go one way. But I'm like two people. And my son will tell you, you know, when I'm at home, I can completely shut down. I can be in, it, in this house and not speak for days. You know, honestly, I do have the other side of me is a little bit hermit. And I think most creatives have to be that because... When uh, so both of what both of us do, what most creatives do, so 80% maybe is output. So you're putting your energy out there all the time and you're absorbing. But then to actually create something, sometimes you have to go into a very dark space inside. And people think people don't like to hear that about me, but I'm telling you the truth because I've got nothing to hide. It's not like a depression. Sometimes it feels like it, but it feels like I almost take my soul away and I just spend some time, me and the Nikki, the real Nikki inside. Not that she's not real, you know, we're all multifaceted, but yeah, completely shut shut down and me and my soul have a little bit of time together. Mm. Because I think I'm quite funny, actually. I you can are spend, quite funny. I can spend months on my own. You know, I think <laughs> it's quite funny, actually. You are, but you're one of the funniest people I know. <laughs> I'm trying um, to be nice today, though. No, no, you're very nice. You're very no. All, all, all of you're hitting all the boxes. Don't worry. You know, it, there's so many places we could go, Nix. And one of the things that you and I have loved to do together over the years, and we did this for many years in a row. Even when I was living in America, we'd often spend New Year together. Um, or, or around New Year, we'd go to a hotel somewhere in England and we would always write down our intentions in cards. We'd, you know, we'd take a moment and sit down and for the year ahead, you've always been someone who has visualized vision. That, where did you learn that? Did you have like a spiritual awakening at some point or was it just that you got exposed to that way of thinking? Curious how that started for you because I know the power of that for you runs very deep and very true. Yeah. Uh, so when I was three years old, I turned to my mum and dad and ex- and just told them exactly, described what I am doing now. And, you know, we lived on a farm at top of an hill and I'm going, mum, one day I'm going to be speaking to loads of people, but I'm not an actress and I'm not a singer and I'm going to write stuff and I'm going to, and my mum's going, what? Are you mad? Everybody thinks that. Why don't you get a nice job in a shop? 
no, you, re- you need to marry a rich man. And I'm going, what? So I actually saw what I came here for as a very young child. And, you know, it's been a chain of events that have brought me here. But my time is now, and I keep saying to you, I've been reasonably successful, but my time is now because the world changed to accept people like me. So, yeah, um, I can't remember what else you asked me about that. I'll I'll throw something else in. I think the world caught up because I I think that, you know, and I think that's quite normal. I think when you're a pioneer, you're usually a little bit ahead of the curve. and, And so you should be. But you nailed it earlier when you said about heart. And it's funny because, as, as you know, we know each other and most people who watch this show will know my, of my work, but part of my work is channeling. And one of the things that, you know, my guides have said for many, many years is that you're coming into the most emotional era that the planet has ever seen. And equally, that if your heart isn't in it, it isn't going to work. It's mm-hmm. not going to work for you and it isn't going to work for other people. So I think it's a tough time on the planet for people who are going through that first breaking open emotionally, but for people like you who've already gone through it and help others midwife that and you stand for emotional resonance, I do think the time is now for you because all this stuff that you've been doing for all these decades is suddenly reaching more people at the right time. Yeah, absolutely. And just to say that there was an epiphany when I was about 38 and I read Shakti Gwain Creative Visualization and that crystallized everything for me. But just to go back to what you were just saying, don't we all deal in emotion? Don't we all use words and form to create an emotive pull in others, a magnetism between us? You know, isn't that actually, and you say that we've caught up, completely we have and I think that people would accept that now that if we if you meet people and you can't create that little spark and we I don't know what to say or do or the body language to create emotion in you because of who I am you're going to delete me and walk away if I can't get you to understand who I am very quickly you're going to delete me because we delete that that we don't understand in a world full of things that we just don't bloody understand anymore. So this will be the era of emotion. You don't wait for it to come to to you. You've got to decide what you want and create emotion yourself with words, form, writing, email. And, you know, there's another thing there as well. And, you know, I, I... it's it's a massive thing that emotion thing and people think that once you've said something or once they've once you've written something say on an email that you know it go, it's gone no what you put out into the world is there for all eternity so be very wise when you're getting it all down and putting it out there it's interesting you say that because i was i was going to ask you about how to tell the world who you are Um, and you've reminded me, so Nikki has just taken part in our Own Your Value course and was one of our guest speakers, and uh, all of our guest speakers are fantastic, but I did not see anything happen around any other module than I did around when you appeared just because of the resonance that so many people found with your story and what had gone on for you, and I remember we did an event called How to Tell the World Who You Are, which was fantastic in London and in Manchester in 2013. Um, And it was really, how do we communicate who we are, our essence, our words, and it was really to see if we could help people from our two different sides, and also as advocates of having to learn that for ourselves the hard way, um, to really become themselves in the world at an all new level. But isn't it interesting that you, you and I saw some different emails come in from the Own Your Value people who remember that event from seven years ago and remember you from seven years ago. And I think one of the things that I remember about doing that live event with you, and I know this from your other events that you've done that I haven't been present at, is you get people crying. And people want to feel, and they want to feel safe to feel. And because you lead with that vulnerability, they go there. And so one aspect of your life has been what happened with your son Jackson and I was hoping you'd share some of that with us today because I think it's really 
pivotal for you and your life and your journey and your empathy? Yeah. Yeah. Well, first of all, people do laugh at my gigs as well. Oh, but, yeah. <laughs> but I, I think that why people get emotional, they're not crying for me. They're crying because they've seen themselves. Yeah. Always, because most people, they don't get a chance to see the reality of themselves. And when they do, they just can't, they just can't stop it. They get really emotional. So, yeah. Do you know, and again, I always knew I'd lose children. I always knew that something was a little bit off. And, you know, I married John. We had Jackson the year after. And it's just coming up to his birthday. It would have been 31 on the 10th of July. And... Um, it was absolutely stunningly beautiful. My mother was half Italian. He came out and got all this olive skin and all this black hair. And this lady, nurse, put him in my arms. And uh, and she, it's a little boy. And I just said, what do you do? What do you do when babies die? And she said, what? I goes, what do you say to the mother when, the, when babies die? And she said, that's a ridiculous thing to say. I goes, I don't think it is. Anyway, long story. So that was your that was your first that was, that was, that was my the first, first thing that thought. came through you when yeah. when he was put in your arms. Absolutely, wow. this boy isn't stopping with me. And you see, I believe that we choose these relationships, and that he that maybe me and him had a conversation, his spirit and my spirit, before we came here. Mum, I'm going to nearly kill you. This time, it's my turn to be your son, and you will know and I will nearly kill you. And I tell you, it nearly did, but I knew. Anyway, November the 2nd, 1989, and yesterday. Please don't think that because it's 30 years ago, it's gone and you forget. Some of that experience, and anybody that's had enormous trauma will tell you, some of that experience is clearer now than it was at the time because the shock in your brain is very clever. It kind of puts it to the back so you can't remember it. But I probably remember more about it now than, than ever I did. Um, anyway, the night before, and this is God's honest truth, the night before, he, he, I had, he had to go to this vegetarian nursery. I'm, I'm vegan now, but I was vegetarian then. I'd chosen this nursery and I had a strange relationship with my husband, you know, and it was like, you've got to work, you've got to work, you've got to get down. You'd be down at that that all at 10 o'clock. So I, that, the night before, I I just had this voice in my head and it was, you've got to clean the carpets. You've got to get on your hands and knees and clean the carpets. There's something going on. And I'm scrubbing. I couldn't say to my husband, we don't, I don't know, maybe a, a germ in the carpet's going to kill the baby. And it was one o'clock in the morning before I went to bed. Woke up, he's still there, thank God. As I left him, I turned to the in the nursery. I turned and I looked at him. It was four months and two days. And he had these big brown eyes. There's a photo of him over there. And he's literally just like that. And I had another voice in my head saying, don't leave him. And I thought, oh no, I've got to, I've got to get to work. But every, every new mum thinks that. He, we were telepathic on some level. We were old souls together. 13 minutes to one, the phone rang. I were at work and I knew. And they just told me as it was, they'd put him upstairs. It was a hot day, even though it was November, they'd not taken his little coat off. And they'd put him in a travel cot and he'd screamed and he'd screamed until he overheated and died. And the shock, I remember, you know, it was like somebody stopped a film and I, it, we had all the customers were all around and I, I heard somebody screaming and then I realized it were me. And there began the nightmare. Now, I am so grateful to that little boy for teaching me what he taught me because I can guarantee you there really is such a thing as your soul because I felt such pain in my core that I, I was putting my hands over the gas flame and burning my fingers because I wanted to hurt somewhere else mm. other than on the inside. And again, it's going to sound nuts, but it opened my whole aura my whole soul my whole presence up to a different way of thinking and i tell you what it gave me i can walk onto any shop floor into any law firm that i'm working at and sit and talk to any person and anybody that's done those one-to-ones with me may well have seen it and i know straight away what has happened
it's not, I, I can't tell you exactly what's happened, but I know the pain it's caused and I know what it's given you. And that's the gift it gave me. It gave me a soul connection to people that I would not otherwise have had. And for that, I say thank you. The other thing, uh, you see, you've got two choices, haven't you? And like attracts like, just to say, I'm, I know a lot of people that have lost children. I speak to a lot of people that have lost children. So it put a bit of pressure on me in another way, really, because I know that when I leave this mortal coil, he's going to be stood there and he's either going to say, would have been better if I hadn't been there, wouldn't it? Because didn't you make a pulse of that? You never did what you gave me to do. Sorry for saying that, but it's, you know, what goes through my mind. Or he's going to say, how did you do that in your 60s, mum? Good on you. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. And it is a choice every single day as yeah. to which one of those things it's going to be. Hmm. I've still got two children. If people ask me, how many kids have you got? I'll go to one here, one upstairs waiting for me. Oh, yeah. Oh. Jackson's, and Jackson's very present in your life, as I, as I think is, is, often, is often the way with other people that I know have lost children. And, you know, he comes up in conversation a lot. And, yeah, and I think that's as it should be because – you feel him orically around you and we've talked about that in relation to your work so firstly thank you for sharing that and secondly you just said a really interesting thing you said in my 60s so you've just entered your 60s which 62. is which is a very you know we know in our society that we're still catching up a bit to let go of some of the stigmas around all kinds of things but including aging and including what certain decades are supposed to look like so you said earlier, I've had some success. I mean, by most people's standards, you've been very successful in terms of the life you've lived, the experiences you've had, the people who've hired you and why they've hired you. But it does feel to me and to those of us that know you that this really is going to be your decade. What do you make of that? When, when the time is right, not until. And the time will never right. And I always knew it. And as for the aging thing, I'll tell anybody how old I am, you know, and it's, you see, you bring into your world what you believe. And it's like, I'm not being awful. I'm not being funny. But don't talk to me about these women can't get on at glass ceilings because I've been the only woman speaker at so many conferences full of men. I've been in boardrooms where I've been the only woman. I've not thought anything about because if there were a problem, it were only going to be in my head and not them. So I've never attracted that. And you know what? I, I'm as fit as I've ever been, and I'm as optimistic as I've ever been, and I've got more drive than I've ever had, because to do what I want to do in life, you need to have had a little bit of experience. It's not that when I stand up and talk, or when I do what I do, it's not like I've just read a sodding book and stood up and related it to you. I have had the grace of living through so many things in every decade. And I have had brilliant times and terrible times. And every single one of them now, it's almost like it's completed the circle and people get me now. People used to laugh at me when I first started speaking, the accent, you know, the demeanor, you know, I were a market trader. And it was funny because People always used to think that I was a market trader, like in the city of London or, you know, at Wall Street. And I'd go, no, no, darling. In those buildings where they sell eggs and fabric and cheese, that kind of market trader. So, yeah, all those things. I could never do what I'm doing now if I hadn't learned all those lessons. And 60-odd, it's nothing. I, I just want to make one point, though. I have had it. I've lost it. I've had it, I've lost it. At the minute, we're all right. Who knows for next week? It ain't money that makes you happy. And I am as happy when I'm potless as when I've got brass in bank. And it, absolutely, it's the people you share your life with. That is what makes you happy. Because if you don't have those people that ignite you, you know, I'm not. We can get we can get on that Marco Polo thing, Lee. And we are. Oh, the other morning we were hysterical. Absolutely you know, we hysterical. we knew each other in a former life. I'm sure mm -hmm. we ignite each other. Most people spend the whole life with people, and they go around just not feeling anything. And if all you've got 
is money and nice sandbags and a fancy car. You're just some unhappy bird or bloke in a Prada suit and Gucci shoes and you are nothing. And, you know, you will never be complete. Never. I always have to make that point. People chase money. I like money like the next person, but you could give me 25 million tomorrow. It won't make me happy, any happier than I am today. So true. Thank you, for, thank you for that. And I'm happy to announce that you are about to bring out a course on body language and vocal tone. And I can't think of a better person to learn that from. Tell us a little bit about this course and what compelled you to create this right now. So we've got the words and, you know, I do a lot of things around words. I've actually got a course coming out in a couple of weeks again. I've done it once and I'm going to record it uh, and sell it, not just on Zoom now. But that's about creating charisma with words, how to get people to feel that they know you instantly. But if you, you only need to go onto those Tesco films and see me in my little supermarket outfit and you can see what I'm doing with my voice. And you can see what I'm doing with my body language. And I learned that on the markets. And then when I stood up in front of thousands of people and I've done different things, I've got my voice to come from a different place. You know, and I thought, this can't be happening. Hang on a minute, I'm dropping my voice. This, you know, there's like an intensity in the room and some people are getting emotional and people are moving to the front of the chair. And I kind of worked it out, you know, what to do with the phraseology, how to space the phraseology, how to get people, you know, it's a difference between going, right, I want that dish, I want that dishwasher emptied. And right, empty the dishwasher. And it's completely different. Politicians are brilliant at it, but we need to get better at it. So everything that I know will be in two one hour modules, one for the voice and one for the body language. But I know a lot of your people watching this will be interested in the energy, but I also talk, which has been an absolute little game changer for me. And everybody laughs until they try it, how you actually get into people's aura without them knowing that you're doing it. And just, you don't even need any words or body language. You do it with a, with a, a movement, which if, you know, I won't tell you now, but when you get into people's aura, they immediately relax because you only let people into your aura that you've got an into your aura that you've got an intimate relationship with a brother, a sister, a mother, a husband, a wife. So it's fascinating and it's not your normal stuff, but I know it works because it's how I have taken money from where it is in people's businesses into their tills in a way that people have been so happy to do because we've ignited them. You know, there's none of this here. We want to close people up. No, none of that. It's all about making those connections. And when you can do that and create that kind of magnetism, people will be your friend forevermore. And when you talk about this, and I, I'm, I'm devil's advocating here for the people in my audience, because a, you know, a lot of people who follow my work, they, they're sensitive, they're empaths. Boundaries is a thing, and, it, and it's often a thing that you've had to spend time learning. So when you say, you know, getting inside someone's aura, I should, I should, I should specify, it's not against their will or invading. What, what you're really talking about is just being willing to do the work to allow that to happen and being willing to organize yourself in a certain way to, to, to make that fluent, right? Well, no, I'll tell you, they don't even know that it's happening because it's, <laughs> they wouldn't even know that it was happening. But so if I, this is a bit difficult because there's just me here. But we'll if try, somebody, we'll try. And I were in a meeting now, so there's somebody here and I've not met them and it were a little bit tense. I might just tap them on the shoulder and go, do you know what? You look exactly like that Lee Harris that lives in Malibu. You want to just get online and have a look at him. But they wouldn't be caught or I'd probably bring my hand up here. You can see me doing it on the Tesco, on the Tesco film. So I might go, do you know what? You look just like that Lee Harris that lives in Malibu. And they would be looking at my hand here, but it's a tiny, tiny tap. And they wouldn't even know that I'd touched them. They wouldn't even know it's, you know, we do, we're going to do a lot of stuff on handshakes and now that's possibly the worst thing you could ever do, but it's a similar kind of a, it's a similar situation kind of reversed, 
But yeah, once you are in somebody's energy and they don't know it, they immediately relax. They don't know why they've relaxed. I call it subliminal touching. And if you honestly get onto that Tesco, little Tesco film, because you'll see me doing it with the customers. I'm like that. And I'm literally going, hey, these are cross buns. Get them toasted with a bit of jam on. And we can't get them out at queue. They don't know why they want to stay there. I, we all do. And the thing is, the point I've got to make is we're not manipulating anybody here. We're connecting with them. You can't manipulate people. That's a completely different thing. Leave that to the people that will teach others about closing and you take them on words that they can't get out of. I'm not interested in that. All I want to do, if I sold them anything or not, is create that very quick connection with them. And, of course, it's all energy, isn't it? It's the quickest way to do it. Mm. So given you've just come through, and I know we're going to have to wrap up a little bit here, but you've just come through several Zoom courses. We're, we're Right now, we're still in, in the lockdown when we're recording this for coronavirus. So you've just taken a whole load of people through various different courses on Zoom. What do you think any creator needs to know about this time that we're in and, and where we're about to go like if, the, if if you're noticing a certain pattern i'm i'm curious is there something that you can see is either holding people back from showing up fully in where we're going or is there any advice you would give people who are feeling a bit hesitant or unsure about how to do their work in the world in 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 the months and year to come well it's going to be people not product it's going to be connections, not closing. And I, and I do know that people are really nervous and anxious about going out there. But the go we're not going back out as the same people. Because what happened when we all got locked in as houses, we actually got locked in as head and, his, and in as heart. And I think that people possibly could have worked out a lot more things about themselves that they would never have found out. So, you know, before you go out there, have a really good look at yourself. And that is who you were meant to be. Be proud of it. I was told when I was little, you speak in that tone, you're never going to be anything. People pay extra to listen to this now. So the whole thing for me is it's people, not product. We're going to delete those people that are behind a mask. We want to see who you really are. And it's people and connections, not product, because every single thing is saturated with just everywhere is saturated with exactly what you do. There's nothing new on the world. So it's, it's all going to be how you make people feel in your unique presence. But you've got to connect with yourself first. Yeah. And, and I love that you bring in again about, you know, your, your accent, because one of the things that you've talked about and you share this is how you were put down for your voice and your speaking voice when you're younger. And one of the things that, you know, I often talk about with the entrepreneurs I work with and the creatives is often the area that we were criticized for or the, the thing that we're criticizing ourselves for is often our gift. And I remember about five years ago, my sister left me a message. She went, I think I just heard Nikki on the telly on the lottery advert because she, <laughs> yeah. she knew your voice. And it was, she'd seen another documentary that you'd been one of the speakers on. And she said, I was in the kitchen and I just heard the voice. And, you know, your voice is a signature for you. And, and so it's, it's, it's always heartening, I think, for anyone who's shy about themselves and who they are in the world and what they're doing to hear from people like yourself who are very confident with who you are now where that journey began yeah it was a bit of a surprise for my son when he first saw that lottery ad advert because i didn't think every and honestly it was on all the time at prime time so right. yeah people still come up and say you're that woman off lottery yeah 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 <laughs> uh yeah Look, so long as we explain who we are and people understand who we are and why we are as we are, you will always be accepted. Where it goes wrong is if you portray somebody who isn't quite real, because then there's an energetic mismatch. So a lot of my stuff is how, you know, in one sentence how you can take people to who you really are so that you will be accepted. Because we'll accept anybody if we know the truth about them. Because everybody's story is compelling, tragic, funny, 
It's just that most people don't think it's important to let anybody else know know any of that. And they think that it's all corporate and we've got to keep it professional. Hey, professionals when it works. That's what professional is. We all have hidden behind this professionalism thing. Don't work now. And you've got be someone, not everyone as a, a, a motto on your website. And that's, that's so, it, 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 it's who you are. And it's also what you teach. And I, I like to call you the connection queen because, uh-huh. <laughs> uh, you know, for anybody, for anybody who's l- watched the show, listened to this show, I will just reiterate that, you know, what, what Nikki is talking about, when you see it in action, and I highly recommend you go and watch the Tesco video that we're talking about that's on Nikki's website on the homepage, it really, it, it's, it's magical. It's magical to watch that connection at work not because it works, but because of what it does, how it transforms, how, how you leading that connection with somebody else, they flower in front of your eyes and they get to open and expand in a way that perhaps they couldn't have done by themselves or without that impetus, or perhaps they'd have done it later down the line. But that's what I love about you, my friend. And I, you're, you're a genius at what you do and you've got a heart of gold in the world, and it's a, it's such an honour to have been your friend this past 10 years. And such an honour to have been your friend in every way. Don't we have a laugh, Lee? We, that, that, I'm telling you, I'm grateful for our Marco Polo videos every morning. <laughs> um, and if you haven't ever got Marco Polo, by the way, and you're shy about getting on video and leaving video messages, I recommend to everybody who needs to get more comfortable on camera, Um, Get Marco Polo, which is an app that you can get on your iPhone. Start leaving video messages to your friends and your family and don't delete them and redo them. Just go with what's there and you'll get really good at just kind of having a conversation. But Nikki, for anybody who has tuned into the show, they can go to your website, NikkiPattinson.com for your upcoming course on body language and vocal tone. You also have Don't Get Deleted, your email course. But I would highly recommend following Nikki on social media, watching her on video, all the stuff. And thank you, Nikki, for for who you are, the way that you impact the world, the way you've impacted my world. And thanks for being here today. Oh, thanks for having me. Thank you, everybody. Take care of yourselves. You have been listening to Impact the World. For more of my work, please visit leeharrisenergy.com. In 2018, I launched a course called Empaths vs. Narcissists, a power dynamic and how to recover from it. It's a video course and it's designed to support you to recover from any kind of relationship where you have given your power away. It's interesting because narcissism has been this big topic and I think it's very easy for any of us to just point the finger and label people. And it's also very complicated. You know, at any particular moment, we can all have narcissistic tendencies or behave empathically. Why I created this course is time and time again, I was meeting and working with so many people who had got themselves quite entangled into this unhealthy dynamic and had come out of it, didn't know how to recover from it, didn't quite know what had happened to them, but also didn't know what to rebuild in themselves in order to avoid walking back into it in the future. And I certainly had my own experiences around this. So the course is born of personal experience, my experience of working with one-on-one clients and groups around the world for several years on this topic. And it's delivered via video, audio, worksheets. And for 2020, we are launching again this fall in September. And it will be open for just over a month that you can enroll because we like to support the course live. So as each piece is delivered over the two months, me and my team can support you as you go through the process. There are also some bonus interviews that I'm adding this year with people who have particular expertise and experience around this dynamic. It's the most healing course that I offer and have offered, and it has been very acclaimed by the students who have gone through it so far. 
So we're really looking forward to opening the doors again. It's a touchy subject, you know, it's not the most fun thing to, to, to look at or to visit in yourself, but the results can be profound when you figure out how you got yourself into giving your power away in the first place, how to recover from the fact that you did it, and then how to avoid doing it again in the future. So I hope you'll join us for Empaths vs. Narcissists 2020. You can visit empathsvsnarcissists.com to find out more details about the full course.